Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I have with me the Sharp Aquos R6. This smartphone features a one inch image sensor. In this video, I wanna talk about why I think this is the future for smartphone photography. Let's do this. I purchased the Sharp R6 with my own money. I found a used unit at a very good condition at a price that I cannot refuse. There's only one particular reason why I got the Sharp R6. It is the one inch image sensor. Currently, one inch is the largest image sensor in any smartphones today. It is also the same mesh sensor that is found in advanced compact cameras from Sony, the RX100 series, Canon, G7S series, and Panasonic also have some cameras with 1-inch image sensor. Panasonic made a 1-inch image sensor smartphone camera previously. There was the Panasonic CM1, but it was about 7 years ago. We're not going to talk about that. But today, in modern smartphone cameras, this has the largest image sensor. I'm not going to do a review for this phone. This is not a review. I don't think that's necessary. A word of caution for those of you outside of Japan. This phone is released exclusively for Japan. So if you got this phone, import outside of Japan. You, may, you don't have any support in terms of service, repair, software updates. You get none of that. So it may not be a wise decision to get this Sharp R6 just for the camera. But hey, I'm a photographer. I'm genuinely curious about what this one inch image sensor in a smartphone camera can do. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to share plenty of photographs taken from this camera and I'm going to share my experience using the camera. And I'm going to talk about why I think this is the future for smartphone photography. It is no secret that smartphone cameras are the most used cameras today and it has made a huge improvement, leaps and bounds of upgrades in terms of image quality and performance it has come a long way. The biggest improvement is definitely in the software department. But there's only so much that the software can do, especially with hardware limitation. The biggest problem that I observe today is over processing. The smartphone cameras are so aggressive in trying to get rid of all the noise that at the same time it just smudges away all the fine details. It tries to give that punchy, that super sharp look that everyone wants. It applies aggressive sharpening that introduces a lot of ugly artifacts and halos in the image. And the colors just look so unnatural, it's too saturated, too processed. The image looks overbaked overcooked, overprocessed, it looks so flat and so unnatural. It's just, it just doesn't look like a photograph anymore. It defeats the purpose of photography. That's the problem when you rely too much on the software, when you push too much in the software department without improving the hardware capabilities of the camera. The only way to move forward, obviously, is to push the hardware is to break the lim limitations on the hardware. One of the best ways to do that is to introduce a larger image sensor, which is the one inch image sensor that is used in this Sharp R6.
The image quality coming from this Sharp Aquos R6 is phenomenal. I can go as far as to claim that this camera and this Sharp R6, this one inch image sensor is the best I've seen in any smartphone cameras today. And I'm not exaggerating. The 20 megapixels, one inch image sensor resolves plenty of fine details. The images come out really sharp. I can say it is almost as good as my Olympus OMD professional camera shooting with a kit lens. It resolves a lot of contrast, details, resolution is really good. This 20 megapixels may not sound like a, a headliner, but trust me, there's plenty of per pixel sharpness to go around that it defeats even the 48, 64, 108 megapixels in other smartphones with those pixel binning technology. Ah, oh, screw that. Take this one inch 20 true megapixels and you'll see what really good resolution is all about. And because the image sensor is quite large, it's one inch, if you can get close enough to your subject and it's, if the background is far away, then you get that nice bokeh look. The shallow depth of field rendering, you don't even need a fake bokeh processing. You get a natural, real shallow depth of field effect. The blur background is real and the bokeh does look really creamy and beautiful as well. In terms of dynamic range, even without turning on the HDR, the camera manages to preserve really good details in the highlight and shadow region, of course at lower ISO settings, but the camera does have HDR function which further helps to balance the highlight and shadow regions, giving you a very very natural looking image to me that's very important i want my images to look natural i don't want the over processed over baked look natural guys that's what we want we want the images to look as realistic as possible and when it comes to low light performance i was actually blown away i tell you usable iso 3200 no kidding. Yes, the ISO 3200 is of course not as good as what I get from my micro photo system. It's definitely very far from what you can achieve with a full frame camera. But for a smartphone at ISO 2000, 3000, if you really scrutinize the image, if you pixel peep, the noise is there of course, but it is not too bad. And they still retain high amount of fine details, which is very critical to make the image look good. I have been shooting above ISO 1000 at night because this camera does not have image stabilization. I need fast enough shutter speed to keep the camera steady. I was doing everything handheld. So this ISO 1000, 1006, 2000, they all look really, really good. Even ISO 3200, it still looks very, very good. And it's something that a lot of other smartphone cameras can cannot do because they will rely on the, oh, the, the night mode, right? The night side or whatever, it merges the images together. It actually makes them look a lot worse. Trust me, I've tested a lot of these night modes. They don't improve the image quality. They make the image look brighter. You think the image look brighter, but if you really, really look at the image closely, this, the, the details are non-existent. Sometimes the, the noise is even worse. It looks so fake and so flat. My goodness, if you really look at what this one inch camera can do in low light, you'll realize that this is definitely the future. Although I've mentioned that the hardware on this Sharp R6 camera is impressive, the image quality is the best I've seen from any smartphone cameras today. The software is far from perfect. The camera has some flaws, has some problems, I have a list of complaints, and I wish these things could have been improved.
The autofocus is so slow and unreliable, it is a pain to use. I'm definitely not confident using this Sharp R6 for my street photography, which is a shame. It has a wide angle lens, it has a one inch image sensor, and I carry this everywhere with me. It would have been the perfect tool for my street photography. Then there is that shutter lag. Oh my goodness, the shutter lag is so bad. Sometimes after you press the shutter button, only one to two seconds later that the camera captures the image. How am I going to work with this? And it's not fixed. Sometimes it gets the image almost instantly. Sometimes it's a half second delay. Sometimes it is unpredictable and it's really bad coming from a new smartphone camera released in 2021. And the lens itself is very prone to flare. Flare and ghosting is a big problem, especially if you're shooting against the light. There's just no way to avoid it. Also worth noting that the camera does overheat from time to time. You'll be given a warning message and because of that, the camera is frozen. You can't use the camera at all until the overheating warning is over. I think that's a big problem for me because the camera does get really hot operating under this hot tropical sun in Malaysia. After shooting actively with this Sharp R6 smartphone camera for the past several weeks, I must say I am very impressed with what this camera can do. I personally believe that the one inch image sensor is the future for smartphone photography. There is something buzzing in the background, I think it's the cue for me to end this video. Do you agree with my assessment or my thoughts on this one inch image sensor being used in a smartphone? Do you think there are better ways to improve smartphone photography besides improving the hardware? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear your thoughts. That's all I have to share in this video. If you found my sharing beneficial, if you've enjoyed looking at my photographs, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way. It will definitely help me to continue making similar content and publish them right here. Please also give me a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe and I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.